as you can see, we're going to run about seven inches deep with the tines. Then we got the harrows in the back, a rotary harrow that's going to fluff up that trash, mix it in with that dirt. Um, what, the, what the purpose is that? It's going to help it decompose over the winter, make a nice seed bed so you can get in plant real easily in the springtime. With running seven inches deep vertically, you're breaking that hard pan, that soil density layer. Um, it's going to help that moisture get down to the subsoil come in springtime and you're not going to get any standing water. Um, what that does, that's going to help that root grow straight down and get to your moisture, nutrients that you need when it comes summertime next year. Um, and we also want to help break down this trash too, so it's easier to plant come in springtime. So on the top it's not, doesn't disturb it on the top as much, it's underneath where it's fractured from one spot where that tooth hit to the other. You can feel it. If you, uh, if you take a look at uh, a lot of the, uh, the current programs that are in place, uh, it's, it's quite challenging for a short liner uh, to get a, a new product into distribution. So one of the things that uh, we have done to try and stimulate uh, that opportunity is as Marcus has said earlier, we are using independent manufacturers reps who have a, a relatively good relationship uh, with the, the local dealers. And in, in order to get those guys on board, the local dealers, whether they be a short line uh, dealer or a major line dealer, uh, we put some programs in place where a dealer can, uh, can floor plan this tool up to 16 months uh, before he actually has to... Uh, uh, to pay for the machine. So there's some flexibility. I mean, there's some discount structures that change, but he can actually floor plan this machine out to 16 months uh, before it totally comes due. And, uh, and that's been a factor that uh, was actually driven by our, our, uh, our field sales guys, our manufacturers reps, to say that in order for us to, uh, to be uh, competitive into the marketplace, we have to offer something that's a little more unique uh, than some of the other uh, uh, manufacturers of tillage equipment out in, the, out in the marketplace today. What we're, here, what we're showing here is a 20-foot smart till unit. Um, it's a vertical tillage tool that runs about 7 inches deep, breaks down the trash process, mixes in the dirt with it to help people pose. We're breaking the compaction underneath the dirt about 7 inches, breaking that soil down. Hey, what are you looking for when you look at a machine like this? What are you evaluating when you walk through the field after it's gone through? Just how much it's stirred the yeah. crop up, basically. I mean, I think this is obviously working a lot better than a disc, because a disc would just, you know, chop the top two or three inches, especially in the fall. It doesn't yeah. penetrate at all. And then, you know, it doesn't get down like this thing's actually poking holes, which he was saying the water would cool down in there and then in the... In the and the winter hopefully freeze up and then, you know, heave the ground with this where it penetrates. And it'll really, you know, decompose the stalks if they're stirred in a little better. What would you go back over this with in the springtime? Um, I don't know. That's what I was, there's some ground I thought about if you could just run over the, with, with something like this in the fall and then no till until in the spring. Yeah. But I don't, I mean, it seems like it levels out real nice. It's better than a disc, I think. So, I mean, you probably could by the springtime. I think it'd be soft, you know, firm enough and level enough, you probably could. Probably settle pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I don't know. If, I suppose you could hit it with a fill pole later if it's got good clearance on it. I mean, that's what we've done that in the past, just disc corn stalks and hit it with a fill pole later. And this is doing a better job than this, so it'd probably be easier to put it through, I would imagine, than find beans into it. So. Would this replace a disc? Is that what that. I would think so. <laughs> it's easily. interesting that you say that because. Yeah. Most people that have purchased a smart till, yeah. uh, one of the things that they have tried to eliminate is the use of a disc. Yeah. Uh, because the disc, you know, seems to offer uh, or gives a lot of compaction. Yeah. And where this will re reduce the compaction. Yeah. So uh, your comment about replacing a disc uh, is, is an ideal situation where that would be a product that uh, uh, we would hope that someone like yourself might consider replacing. Oh, yeah. And that's a 
there too. It just really, I mean, with those just sliding sideways, you're really compacting about two or three inches. Right. You know, where this so here we're fracturing the soil approximately yeah, eight inches. Popping it up. Right. Yeah. So, so as you can see with all the trash on top of the surface too, and it's spread out, there's not too many piles around. Yeah. That's going to be compliant with the soil conservation department with this too. You know, especially no-till purposes, and and that's where everybody's going nowadays. You mm -hmm. know trying to keep from burying that trash. Plus that's going to keep uh, more nitrogen in your dirt as it breaks down over the winter. Dan, anything you want to add? I'll just talk about spring. Uh, a lot of our producers, especially farther north, will run this in the fall just like this, then they'll come back in the spring if the main game set fairly straight, real non-aggressive, and run the Harris the other way so they're more of a culture basket and run ahead of the planter. And what that'll do, That'll open that ground up early. It'll warm up a lot quicker. It'll dry out that planting zone. Give you a real nice, quick, warm, dry planting zone. And you can get in a lot of times way earlier than you can if you work for Mother Nature. Well, I think, uh, you know, from our standpoint, we'd like to see a, uh, um, a dealer that uh, is willing to take the machine out to his, uh, his customer base and show his... Uh, his customer base, the value of a smart till. Uh, you know, as, as Marcus uh, alluded, you know, there's a lot of uh, farmers that uh, are, are not interested in looking at new tools, uh, yet they're trying to improve their efficiency. So, uh, you know, they need to maybe be exposed to something like this where uh, the dealer would take the tool, uh, as in this particular case here, uh, out, to a, out to a farm, uh, let the farmer, uh, you know, operate it on uh, five or six acres of land, maybe up to 10 acres of land, uh, let him take a look at it and compare it as to uh, how it performs in relationship to his current tillage practices. So from a dealer standpoint, we're looking for that dealer to, uh, to get, his, get his customers, uh, maybe hold a field day, uh, maybe a demo day, uh, get some customers out in the field, let them take a look at it and, uh, and see if it, it fits their farming practices. Uh, we've also got a program in place where if they want to, they could uh, they could rent it for a given period of time, uh, rent to purchase, you know, similar programs like that. Well, I think, you know, I think the, you know, as we said, uh, our, our, our key customer base right now appears to be a, a no-till farmer. But another, another area that we're interested in is the dairy market. Uh, you know, you, farm equipment based out of Wisconsin, we think there's a great potential for the dairy farmer uh, or the livestock farmer in general to take a look at this type of tool. And, uh, you know, we just established a little bit more distribution in Wisconsin. Uh, where we're showing this, this type of tool and, and looking at the value of it from incorporating manure. For instance, uh, you know, we're working with a, uh, a, a, a dealer up in Wisconsin by the name of Jim Jolivet, and uh, his, his key business is, is the incorporation of manure. I mean, he, he, uh, he incorporates manure and spreads manure as, as part of his, uh, his business model. And recently we started working with him, and he's taken a, a smart tell and, uh, and added a drag line and, uh, and a manifold where this, this unit is, is being mounted on top of a smart tail and then he's putting splash pans in front uh, of the tines themselves and dragging uh, this drag line through the field and incorporating manure. And he would be a typical example of, of someone that we'd like to see jump on board and get more aggressive with those types of applications in, uh, in dairy country around the country.